In our last program, we introduced the idea of enthalpy change, and in particular, an exothermic reaction, one where the reacting system loses energy, and endothermic, where one where the reacting system gains energy. But how much energy? This program is going to take a look at a means or method we use to measure that, and it's called calorimetry. So again, our goal is, how do scientists arrive at that particular measurement of energy? You can also see the preferred unit here for enthalpy chain. It's kilojoules per mole, in this case, per mole of methane. It could also be viewed as per mole of two moles of oxygen consumed. But for convenience sake, let's just stick to per mole. Here I have a pot sitting on a natural gas stove. My reacting system would be this fuel down here where the blue flame is. So that constitutes the reacting system. The surroundings, the pot, the water in the pot, and the air, they would constitute my surroundings. Let's start by focusing on the surroundings for a minute. The surroundings begin with a certain amount of internal energy in them. Then as time goes on and the water warms up, the pot gets warmer and the air gets warmer, the internal energy of those begins to rise until such time as I turn the stove off. To measure this change, this increase, we employ this equation. And this is found in our IB data booklet. In our particular case, although the surroundings constitute the air, the metal of the pot, and the water, we're going to focus on water since it makes up the bulk of the surroundings in this case. So in this particular equation, M would refer to the mass of water in the pot. C would be the heat capacity of water. Now that's a number that's in your IB data booklet as well and it typically is a constant listed around 4.18 joules per gram of water per Kelvin. And delta T is the temperature change of the water. Now, let's take a look at what's happening over in our reacting system. It too begins with a certain amount of energy, and once the stove is ignited, that internal energy is reduced the reason I know that it's reduced comes from the law of conservation of energy. That if something is gaining energy, in this case the surroundings, it must be at the expense then of my reacting system. So we can see that these two lines, although they are the same magnitude, they are going in the opposite direction. So I can employ this relationship. Now this one's not in the IB data booklet, but your teacher will probably introduce it to you. This Q is the same as the Q that you see over here, except the negative sign to indicate that it's being lost. Let's put these two expressions together. That would then give us the number of moles times the enthalpy change, the molar enthalpy change, will equal m C delta T. It's important to remember that the information you use here is gleaned from the reaction. So if one is calculating the moles, one is interested in the moles of the reactants. Here, this refers to the surroundings. What is absorbing the heat? Let's put these together now in a couple of practice questions. So here we're going to burn some candle wax down here. So that would constitute my reacting system. And that heat is being absorbed mainly by the water that's present up here which leads me to a couple of assumptions that we make when we use this technique. 
Firstly, we assume that all the heat that's generated by my reacting system finds its way into the water. Secondly, we also, because we're measuring combustion, we're going to assume it's complete combustion, that the wax down here underwent complete combustion. And lastly, we assume that the density of water and heat capacity of water are unaffected by the temperature change. So let's look at the information we're given here. Here we have our mass of candle wax and we have the chemical formula. Those two bits of information should allow us to determine the number of moles of reactant. So N, we would calculate by taking the mass and dividing by the molar mass. So in this case, 0 0.14 grams. And the molar mass of that we can get from using the um, periodic table is 436.9 grams per mole. And putting that through a calculator, I get 3.20 times 10 to the 4 moles. Now I am carrying one more significant digit than I need to because I will round off at the end. Let's see what other things we're told here. 200 cubic centimeters of water. That constitutes our surroundings. And if we assume that the density of water is unaffected, the density of water is one, we can get away with saying, well, that's the same as 200 grams of water. So that can be the mass of my surroundings. Now here we have some information regarding our temperature change. Now before I calculate what that is, let me just remind you that the heat capacity we use, the C in this expression, as I mentioned earlier, was 4.18 joules per gram per Kelvin. So if I'm going to use the temperature change, should I not convert it to Kelvin? Well, let's look at what that would do. Temperature change would be the final temperature. So I would have to go 273 plus the final temperature, 24.8 minus the initial temperature, which would be 273 plus 21.7. Well, you can see here that the 273s will essentially cancel. Converting these temperatures to Kelvin is really not going to get us any closer to the answer. We could have left them in Celsius and essentially arrived at the same temperature change. So when we subtract those two from each other, the temperature change is 3.1 Kelvin. Now I'm not saying that 3.1 Kelvin is the same as 3.1 Celsius, but what I am saying is the temperature change of 3.1 Celsius is the same as a temperature change of 3.1 Kelvin. So you can subtract the Celsius temperatures to get the temperature change in Kelvin. So I have all of my prerequisite information. Let's go over to the equation now and just rearrange it so that we can get delta H on one side and it'll be minus MC delta T. And all that information is from the surroundings divided by the number of moles of my reacting fuel. So I've got minus 200, 4.18, And down on the bottom, my 3.2 times 10 to the negative 4. And that comes out to, um, to two significant digits because this has two, as does my um, number of moles have only two significant digits. Um, and we get negative 8.1 times 10 to the 6th, and that would have units of joules, because that's all that would be left. And since our preferred unit is in kilojoules, divide that by 1,000 minus 8.1 times 10 to the 3 kilojoules per mole. Let's try another question. 
Let's look at some of the assumptions in this question. Again, we assume that all the heat is exchanged with the water and not our styrofoam cup or the air. We also assume that the heat capacity of water is not affected by the chemicals that are in it, that it's still 4.18. And lastly, we assume the density of all solutions is also unchanged by the presence of the solutes that are in it. And I want to focus on how we use that in uh, my first point. We need to know what the mass is of the surroundings. And in that case, we have 50 cubic centimeters of hydrochloric acid and 50 cubic centimeters of our base, sodium hydroxide. Because this is water, or mostly water, we can assume that that's 50 grams plus 50 grams. So the mass of my surroundings, I'm going to use 100 grams. The other point is what do we use for the number of moles? We calculate number of moles by concentration times volume, but I've got two concentrations and volumes. I've got that concentration with that volume, and I've got this concentration with this volume. Well, the amount of heat that's going to be generated is going to be determined by the limiting reagent, the one that there's less of, or the one that will produce the less amount of product. Um, because these react in a one-to-one -one ratio, this combination right here is the important one to determine my number of moles. So my concentration, 0 0.10 moles per decimeter cubed. And I have to multiply that by the volume in decimeters cubed. So that's 0 0.050, because I have to multiply by 1,000, a, a or sorry, divide by 1,000. And those will cancel, giving me 5.0 times 10 to the negative 3 uh, moles. Um, other thing I'm going to point is that this is in kilojoules. And for our expression, we need it in joules, because remember that 4.18, the specific heat capacity, is joules per gram per Kelvin. So I need joules here. So that's the same as negative 53 times 10 to the 3 joules per mole. So I have everything now in the appropriate units. So let's go back to our equation. And delta H is minus mc delta T. We need delta T by itself, so that would then give us that the temperature change would be the same as N delta H negative and MC. So let's put in our values. We have um, minus 5.0 times 10 to the minus 3 moles, and that's being multiplied by negative 53 times 10 to the 3 joules. And on our bottom, the mass of our water, the surroundings, was 100 grams and our 4.18. And solving for that, we get a positive um, 0 0.63 Kelvin. Now just a quick sign check on this. The temperature of our surroundings is increasing as indicated by that positive sign. And that makes sense. An exothermic reaction, which this one is, should generate heat and that heat would then be used to warm the surroundings. So there's a couple of examples of calorimetry.